Hello everyone, thanks for tuning to the third ANSO update of uh, 2021. So uh, yeah, here we go again, another uh, series of ANSO updates taking us from like this first one uh, right way through to August. And then uh, when we get to uh, the autumn, we'll of course stop doing ANSO updates uh, as we will uh, include all ANSO information within uh winter updates that will begin at the beginning of september but for now uh through through uh to august we will be doing uh, monthly enso updates this is the first one should have had this done for you in january it's the first of february so i'm a little, a little bit late uh doing this uh aren't i but um never mind i'm recording it still in january i'm recording it at uh 10 past 10 um on the 31st of january so you know Almost, almost uh, still within January uh, for this one. So I should get on with the answer update for you. In a moment, just to say that coming up later on today, we're going to have your 10 to 14 day uh, update. It will have all regular features included in it as well. Right, so here we go again then. Uh, and so update number one for 2021. We're going to start off looking at cold and warm episodes by season page at uh, CPC and CEP and NOAA. So this is depicting uh, all ANSO events, uh, ANSO events uh, by a trime of the periods going right way back to uh, 1950. So for example, you can see that in the year of 1950, we have a La Nina through the first half of the year. Uh, anyway, um, that's these negative blue numbers just here. That reverses to Enso Neutral um, as we go into the second half of uh, 1950. On the other hand, 1953 has an El Nino uh, going on. So that's these uh, red uh, positive red numbers just here. We have a weak El Nino through most of the year of 1953, just lasting into the beginning of 1954, before that again reverses into uh, La Nina for 1955 that carries on in 1966 as well so essentially um you know uh, it's a case of uh, blue is la nina red is el nino right let's come down to the latest uh then so we come down to 2020 uh just here we begin the uh year with um an incredibly weak el nino uh, event actually i think this has been sort of taken out of el nino uh, a few months ago this was red but i noticed it's gone back to black now um so uh they've revised this haven't they at cp city so just to explain that to get an el nino or a la nina designated you have to reach quite strict uh requirements so uh, you have to, uh, for El Nino, you have to be like uh, 0 0.5 degrees, half a degree or more above average for La Nina. You have to be 0 0.5, half degree or more below average. And you have to get over five tri-monthly periods. So what's happened here, I hadn't noticed this uh, until just now. Just on record. What's happened here is that one of the tri periods have been revised down. Uh, that does go on a little bit. You know, they do revise things uh, as more data comes in. Uh, sometimes uh, several months after the time period. Sometimes it, it can be, be like several years after the time period. Um, so, so here's 2019 just to you. You see that we reach um, 0.5 degrees in that box just there for October, November, December. And again, in this box just here for November, December, January. Uh, again, in this box just here for December, January, February, and also in this box here for January, February, March. That gives us four tri-monthly periods, but it's this box here that they have revised, I think. So uh, at one point a few months ago, that was also showing uh, 0 0.5 degrees or there or thereabouts. And these numbers uh, were coloured red uh, to indicate that we had had like the weakest El Nino ever recorded. That's been revised down, I think, by 0.1 of a degree. And so now, actually, it turns out we thought that for winter of 2019-2020, we'd had like the weakest El Nino ever recorded. Weakest El Nino on record. But it turns out that actually we just had an ENSO neutral winter now uh, for 2019-2020, albeit at, at the high end of, uh, of ENSO neutral. So just like borderline ENSO neutral to uh, very weak El Nino. Anyway, 
A bit of a change. I hadn't noticed that until I was recording just now. So so that's taught me off on a tangent. Let's get back to business. Um, so uh, the landing. So where we are right now. So, of course, we so we begin uh, 2020 right, with, with uh, a borderline El Nio then. Then we reverse that into Enzo Lucci on the negative side through the summer. And uh, those uh, temperature numbers get more negative as we go into the end of the year. So you can see that we have already had four trimonthly periods reaching uh, required landing your threshold. This one just here going down to uh, minus 0 0.6. This one just here going down to minus 0 0.9. This one just here going down to minus 1.2. That's moderate landing your level uh, really. And this one here going down to minus 1.3. So uh, I think this, uh, that when this box, the number gets placed in this box that's going to appear here uh, in a few days time for November, December, January that is going to be negative again, and uh, and so these colours then will go blue. Now there's no uh, there's no chance of this landing you're being revised back to Enzo neutral because even if light like, gets um, changed by 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a degree, these three numbers just here are easily uh, reaching uh, landing your threshold. This one uh, will as well. That will easily reach landing your threshold, and probably this one. Uh, or this one or two just here will easily reach landing your threshold. So there's no danger of this landing you being uh, sent back to uh, Enzo Neutral at some point in the future. This is, is a proper distinct uh, landing year winter that we have for 2020, 2021. So where we are right now, uh, so I've explained that we uh, are having a landing year. This is how uh, things are looking right now in terms of sea surface temperature is where we are right now with uh, the uh, sea surface temperature in the actual Pacific Ocean is like this. So, of course, we've got Indonesia just here. We've got Peru just here. This is the equatorial Pacific Ocean uh, just here. And ENSO is the cyclical warming and cooling of the equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean. You can almost think of it like the Earth's thermostat when we're in El Nino thermostats being turned up and we're releasing heat when we're uh, in the La Nina, the thermostat being turned down we're withdrawing uh, that heat from uh, the ocean so uh, we've got a central uh, and western based uh, El Nino at the moment so so uh, the coldest sea surface temperature numbers are just here the central and western part of the Ecuador Pacific Ocean not as cold in the eastern portion of the Ecuador Pacific Ocean at the moment, but even there, we're still like a weak, uh, weak landing year territory, I think. But it really is through this central and western part of the actual Pacific Ocean that the, the landing year is at its strongest, which is very cold of an average uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. We also have plenty of uh, colder than average waters in these, uh, in in terms of subsurface temperature anomalies uh, as well. So with this, you have to think that uh, this is like the uh, surface of the uh, Equatorial Pacific Ocean uh, just here. So that's what I'm just looking at. We've got Peru there, and Indonesia is going to be over here. And then these are the depths of the ocean going all the way down to 300 uh, metres. Very, very deep ocean, uh, of course. So uh, in the far western uh, portion of the actual Pacific Ocean, just here, we have got, actually got quite a mass of uh, warmer than average subsurface temperature. So that's right over towards the Indonesian islands. Generally, the uh, Pacific Ocean at depth is in a colder than average state, which is, again, very indicative of, uh, of, of La Nina. So um, you can see uh, going down to like uh, depths of uh, 150, 200 metres, we've got significantly cold on average subsurface temperature anomalies and, and may rise up all the way to the surface of the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean as well. So, so landing is well, um, you know, it's well defined on the surface and also subsurface wise as well. Another way of looking at uh, La Nina and El Nino is through the SOI, that's the Summit Oscillation Index. Uh, this is measuring air pressures between Darwin and Tahiti 
in the uh, South Pacific. So so uh, when the SOI is in its uh, positive phase, the abstract setup will be reflective of La Nina. When the SOI is in its negative phase, the abstract setup will be reflective of El Nino. Uh, because we've got such a, such a clear signal for La Nina in the ocean in terms of what the sea and subsurface temperature anomalies are doing, you would expect the atmosphere also to be in a La Nina type uh, state. And indeed, uh, very much is the case. So so um, these are our these are our columns just here. So we've got our date column just here. This is from Queensland government, by the way, which I think is part of Bureau of Meteorology. We've got our date column just here. We've got our column for Tahiti in terms of uh, barometric pressure just there, and we've got our column for Darwin in terms of barometric pressure just there. And then this is the overall SOI uh, daily number, and they have our thirty day and ninety day average uh, numbers as well all the numbers are positive all the numbers are positive uh so for example we've got um let's take some we've got 19th january just here plus 22.99 to get a negative number there that's a one off we've got 23rd january plus four we've got 25th january plus 10 we've got 26th of january at plus 25 we've got 27th of january plus 30 very very positive indeed uh 28th of january plus 21 last couple of days haven't been quite as positive but even so same positive Positive territory, 29th at plus 8, uh, 30th at plus 6, 31st at plus 6 uh, as well. This is all indicative of uh, of La Nina. So our 30-day SY average, which is this red line just here, is solidly in positive territory um, between around uh, plus 16 and plus 20. Our 90-day SY average average which is this uh yellow dash line just here is also positive as well everything's positive the accurate setup you know being told the atmospheric setup uh via uh the soi or, or the soi is telling us that the atmospheric setup uh you know is, is very much to uh landing so we've got a coupling of the ocean and also the atmosphere and so, so we are in a definitive landing phase. But where do we go from here? Let's have a look at some uh, model output then. So this is, uh, first of all, from CANSIP. So this is how uh, CANSIP is forecasting February. Pretty good reflection, I think, of where we are right now. Coldest uh, sea survey temp on just here. Uh, not as cold in the uh, eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Let's go through the next few months. That's March. That's April. That's May. So the landing is signal goes on actually into uh, the spring typically you expect to reverse back to enso neutral uh, really through the spring. These events, be they El Nino or La Nina, reach their peak, um, you know, around Christmas and then you expect them to ease off. It is easing slightly from like where it is in February. The forecast is easing the anomalies slightly from where they are in February. But even so, that's quite a signal for La Nina to continue into uh, the summer. And actually, Kansas wants to carry that on through the rest of the year. So we're up to December 2021 now. And uh, if anything, the La Nina signal is perhaps strengthening again through the central and eastern part. <coughs> Excuse me, eastern part of the actual Pacific Ocean. So if Kansas is right, landing it is going to continue right the way through uh, the rest of the year and may actually strengthen uh, like from summer into autumn in the eastern part of the Ecto Pacific Ocean, which is, which is a little bit unusual, but you can get like two year uh, landing year events. You can sometimes get two year only year events as well, but. Um, but but yeah, it looks like Kansas wants this to be like a, like a double landing, like a two year uh, landing. It's early days on that, though. We've got to get past the spring predictability barrier uh, before we know uh, more. Uh, CFSV two. Uh, let's look at that one. Uh, so uh, with this, it's like a graph forecast. Um, so with this, uh, again, we've got the dates in terms of monthly periods on the bottom of the chart and the sea surface temperature on, it's on the side. One important number, of course, is half degree above average for El Nino, half degree below average for La Nina, where we are right now. Just here, like almost back to neutral, but not quite. We're still into weak La Nina territory. 
And uh, as we go through the next couple of months, we stay around that. That's a black dash line, Sean Sommel mean. That stays around where we are now, up to April. But then after that, CFSV2 shows the landing is strengthening again through the summer and into uh, the autumn. Perhaps going down to quite a strong uh, landing at type level by, by the autumn. Again, it's very early days on that, but we have got both Can6 and also CFSV2 keep this landing year uh, going uh, through the year, through through the whole of this year. Um, I wouldn't take that forecast particularly seriously in terms of the strength of the landing year. Uh, we know that, like, the landing year that, we, that we're in at the moment was at one point, um, with CFS being forecast, to become, like, the strongest landing year on record, and it did not happen. So don't take the, 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 the forecast in terms of strength too seriously, but it's perhaps an indication in terms of the overall trend anyway, but uh, landing year may continue, and it might strengthen a little bit as we get into uh, the summer. Uh, ECMWF is a little bit different though, so uh, this is how the ECM uh, is forecasting uh, things. So again, temperature on the side, dates on the bottom, monthly periods, where we are right now is there in Lani territory around uh, one degree below average. From here though, uh, the, uh, the ensemble plume from the ECMWF is lifting things back up to ENSO neutral. Probably still on the cold side of ENSO neutral. Uh, so most of these are like still on the cold side of Enso neutral, but but definitely lifting things back to Enso neutral uh, through the summer rather than sort of strengthening the landing year again uh, into uh, the summer. So that one wants to take us from landing year back to Enso neutral, which is more of a typical route what you expect to happen. Uh, you know, uh, free the spring and expect that free the spring we see the landing year fade and we go back to Enso neutral and then we wait to see where we go from there when we get into the summer. Jams Tech also taking things back to uh, Enso Neutral. So once more, we've got temperature on the side. Dates and appears on the bottom. Uh, where we are right now is around here. So again, we uh, landing in territory. The red line, she's on some mean, lifts back up to Enso Neutral by the time we get through to uh, the summer. So that one wants to take us uh, from landing here to uh, Enso Neutral. And then lastly, uh, UK Met Office uh, looks like this. So uh, the CSA temperature only for February, March, April, again, shows that the coldest anomalies are in the central and western part of the equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean, where we are still at Lanier uh, thresholds. Uh, three to five months looks like that. So still a bit of a signal for weak Lanier to continue for the spring, for March, April, May. And then this is the final tri-monthly period, April, May, June. And then we've gone back to Enso Neutral. Then we're back to Enso Neutral, albeit on the cold side of Enso Neutral. But UK Met Grocery 5 is also taking us back to Enso Neutral um, later on in the spring. So, yeah, quite an interesting uh, update. Definitely, so, so we've established that, like, the week El Nino that we thought we had um, for winter 2019-2020 has actually been uh, erased, and it turns out we hadn't uh, had an Enso Neutral <laughs> winter for 2019-20. Who knew? Um, we're in landing at the moment. That will be uh, that will be formally sort of uh, designated um uh, next month, uh, or this month, actually, when you're watching this in February. So, so I'm recording this like in the last hours of January. You're going to watch it in the first hours of February, and uh, so this month, so this month, February, uh, we'll have the uh, the landing year formally designated. And where we go from there, we've got a couple of models forecasting that landing year will continue through the year and may actually strengthen and get stronger again through the summer and into the autumn. And we got the other models taking us from landing it back to Enso Neutral during uh, the spring. So we should wait and see about that. Right, we're off and running. We're off and running uh, with our um, with our Enso update. So there's going to be a monthly Enso update now every month right way through to the end of August. I think we'll probably do two this 
month actually because this is like this should have been january's update so i think we'll probably do another ENSO update at the end of february and typically these updates do occur at the end of the month uh really or late on in the month so i think this february is going to be a little bit unusual map will have two ENSO updates but remember this one is like a delayed january update if you see what i mean so so there'll be another ENSO update coming up by the end of february and then there'll be an ENSO update every month at the end of every month uh right way through to to August. So we're off and running with ANSO updates for 2021. And uh, yeah, next one will be with you uh, at the end of this month, at the end of February. Uh, we're going back later on your 10 to 14 day update, including all of regular features. So come back for that then. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.